In celebration of 20 years of Zabalaza, Tandi Somazwai, also known as King Ta, has today dropped her new single titled Glungile, ahead of her upcoming album titled uh, Sanfofa, uh, which is set to be released on the 10th of May. And now Aldrin had the honor to sit down with King Ta, reflecting on her new music and celebrating 20 years of Zabalaza. Take a look. So guess who's joining us in studio? It's the... Tandiso Mazwa. Do we just say King Ta or do you, we say Tandiso Mazwa? I've got so many names now, you know. Whichever so many one you names. Prefer, Did you get a new prefer. name in the US by any chance? No, but now the little babies, they call me Auntie King Ta. Auntie, <laughs> Auntie King Ta. So two titles that go <laughs> yeah, with it. So two you titles. Have, but you have to be like under the age of like 12. Under the age of to 12. To call me that. Otherwise, you can just King Ta it. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank really appreciate you. it. I want to show you something quickly on our screen. Where does this take you back to? To 2003. Mm -hmm. This was shot at a, like, a, my photographer then was Johanna Strayer. And we shot at his apartment in the parking lot. And we had absolutely nothing really to work with. We kind of just found the chair. Really? Yeah, we found the chair and we thought, this will work. <laughs> it looks so intentional, so deliberate. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It is, it, it, it is art. I didn't realize there was a bit of a knee showing there. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of a yeah. knee showing there. But then the album, Zabalaza. Yeah. yeah. Oof. I mean, this album, I mean, I, I could have never imagined all the things that happened to me because of this album. I mean, this album is what made me who I am, you know. Uh... It made me a person in my community, you know, I could, I could point to something that um, I have shared that was of value. Mm. You know? And I feel like that's really what we all look for in our lives is to be able to point to something and say, this is what I did for my community, for my people. You know, the globe. Yeah, so I'm really, I'm really proud of this moment. That yeah. Moment, you know? yeah. Do you remember performing at Market Theatre? performing the, first the greatest South African music book. I what? You mean, I think this is like 2002 or something. Do you remember that moment? Were you there? No, I wasn't you there. You were there. <laughs> Some people... But do you the, remember the, it, that moment? I do remember that day because I thought, well, you know, I want to sing. I just want to show people that I can do this, you know. And, and I, I sang like some South African songs, but I remember singing uh, Donny Hathaway. Uh, what's that song? I've been so many places. Hey, my I always, life so yeah, I if Whitney Houston sang it, then I always sang it yeah. as well. So Whitney Houston had done a version, and I was like, I love this song. Yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of, um, yeah, so, yeah, I was kind of singing songs that I loved from, from my childhood. And I remember that that's when Sipostoli came to me and he said, ah, we need to make an album. Yeah. We need to make an album. So. And because he was in the audience, right? Yeah, he was in the audience. And I mean, I had met him before. But he, and he was kind of talking about making an album. So when that happened, it just kind of, you know, put a stamp to it. Yeah. That I was maybe capable. Well, he's in Washington, of course, now. And this is what he sent us. Oh. <laughs> we had such a huge fight, I can't believe he's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, it is coming up. Um, so he sent us this little bit um, earlier on, in the early hours of the morning, because I came up with the idea. I woke up this morning. I was uh -huh. like, who's the one person that I can reach out to and say, hey, tell us about Tandiso Mazwai? And it was Dr. Sipo's sure he Here was. it is. Take a look. <laughs> I went to the Kalo team. I said, there's a Tandiswa that you don't know. Make an offer to sign up with Kalo. I then went to Kalawa. I met with Manda Spikiri, with Oskido, and I met with Bruce. I said to them, please allow us to do a solo album at Kalo. You will have the royalty override in the albums because I think we can create magic and that Tandiswa will remain a member of Bongoma film, but she would do her solo uh, with Carlo. And at that time, I had now become the deputy MD of Carlo Music Group. So I had this idea of this song, the sound, in my head. Then we had a dilemma. We did not have a reference 
that we could take to producers that we had identified all over the world to produce this artist. Because we could not use the sound of Bongo Muffin and their voice there and say, this is the kind, of, this is the artist we want to produce. Because it would have then directed them to create a sound that is similar to the Bongo Muffin uh, music. We then agreed that, um, Tanis and I, that I am going to make three or four songs pre-production that will then become the reference to give to the producers. I started with Zabalaza, funny enough, which is the title of the album. And I remember calling her and saying, Tandis, I've got a song, I've got a song. Zabalaza, Zabalaza, Zabalaza. And she says to me, no, you're not going to tell me how to sing and what to sing. So I kept quiet, I went back, I made the music. Then I created the chorus. I got the best vocals to sing the chorus. Then we gave her the music. Pre-production, we did in the name there. Hey, 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 That is how the music is created. And then, I then we did a Nizala Moba. Who's the baby is in the Behout in Umama? Umama, which has taken from a song back in Mampondi. I said, Listen to this, let's create music. We did in the Ahamba. By the time we did in the Ahamba, Tanza then says, No, man, why are we looking for producers? Let's do the music. And you went on to do the music. Yeah, well I mean, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll forever be indebted to Sipo. He was so passionate about what I was capable of and the fact that I could have a solo voice, you know. And when we were together in Bongo Muffin, the, the four of us, Stone, Jassid, Speedy, and myself, we were always getting people in our ears saying, Babe, it's mm -hmm. you. You're the one. You're the one, yeah. Yeah, you're the one. Mm -hmm. And... I remember like, Speedy was much younger, so he kind of fell for it, and that's why he left the group just before we skyrocketed. Yeah. But like, Jassid was getting it, Stone was getting it, I was getting it, and we were really, it would really make us angry sometimes, because we'd be like, come on guys, we are a group, and this is what we do, and don't try and, you know, break up the group. Uh, but Sipo had such a compelling argument for why... I should do a solo album, and he was so passionate about my individual voice mm. and my individual perspective, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that you got him to, <laughs> to say something. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm happy that you agreed to do the album also, and you guys did it the way that you did, because the other day when you posted on X um, and asking us about Zabadaza, us being us the fans, including the crew, yeah, <laughs> um, you asked um, where does the song take you to, or where does the album take you yeah. to Zabadaza? And I remember 2004, still in grade 11, but for me, it took me back to Saturday mornings, Nienzi washing, peasing sugar, yeah. sugar washing, and your music would be playing in the background. And I remember how my aunt used to love, love music in the air. It's well incredible done. to me how the album just became a part of people's lives. It just became a part of, like, South African life. You know, and as an artist and a young artist, you don't think that you can create something like that. Um, and I've always heard such amazing stories about how people grew up with the music, they shared it with their parents, it mended family relationships. My favorite kind of story is the one where people say to me, um, the father bought one for himself, the mom, the kids, one for the house, one for the car, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's why we sold so many CDs, yeah. because it was like a household would have five CDs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's and now you, you celebrate another milestone, US, we're going to start there with, with the tiny desk, where the S yeah. you got. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, um, we had like been planning for, for this like since last year, since September, mm -hmm. and um, we were told about tiny desk, I think in November or something, or somewhere like that last year. And I was like, oh, my daughter was so excited about it that I also started getting excited. Because yeah. at first I thought, yeah, it's Tiny Desk, uh, great, yay, you know. 
But then my daughter was acting like it's a Grammy. <laughs> well, because other Grammy winners <laughs> have been oh, there. Yeah. Okay, you know. Um, and so I remember we were not told to say anything about it. I was told not to say a word. And then one morning I woke up and I, I went on Twitter and I said, can you believe it? They say I must go and sing on a desk. It's I knew it. it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just like a little teaser. And I remember my publicist calling me going, you can't say anything about Tiny Desk. But, yeah, I mean, it's been so amazing uh, how people have received the performance and how yeah. supportive everyone has been and, you know. Oh. This and the band was incredible, huh? Hey? Thank you so much. Thank the you so much. The band was been, incredible. We've been playing together for many, many years. So, yeah. Um, it should be. It should be. It, <laughs> it should, should be. be like that. It should be. U Ingoma. Yes. Oh, tell us about that song. They are, are people interesting... interpreting the right way? Uh, no, I will tell you that they are not. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> but it is a fun way of interpreting it. I think that there are. Uh, layers to the song and some of it does have that kind of like it does have um, a, a, a sexual tension to it and that's okay um, but yeah I mean people often ask my partner whether the song was for her and she <laughs> was there when I wrote the song we had just met and I was in love with about four people oh okay <laughs> uh, two of whom had completely broken my heart and so some the song is really about a lot of people it's not about one person yeah well wow. it's about a lot of people and a lot of different types mm. of of love so it's not about that one single act that people want to make it about it's a lot more nuanced like the if you listen to the album the song just cuts at the end and that's because i'd had a, go a fight with my girlfriend that day and i was doing the end of the song and i was like this is how we break up <laughs> this very suddenly, very, you know, uh, yeah. this is how love it's goes. It's a beautiful you know. song. It's a beautiful song. It's almost like um, uh, the one with Ntate Tsepotula. Yeah, I mean... Oh, what an incredible duet. What an yeah. incredible romantic song. Yeah. And I remember when he passed on, I thought to myself, like, I wonder what Tandiswa is going through right now. I was so heartbroken to not be able to go and bury Ntate Tsepotula. Mm. I mean... COVID was like that, right? There was just so much heartache. And the ways in which we were used to mourning were completely interrupted. And, um, yeah, it was the hardest thing to not be able to bury him. And to have him on that song, even then, I was acutely aware of the fact that I was lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because this was my first album, and suddenly I had all these greats. I mean, the, the album has... Uh, Wabusipo Kumete plays mm. bass on Latum Lens. Uh, Fana Zulu is on the album. Uh, Nga, who's the drummer for Stimela, is on the album. Uh, the best backing vocalists, Kanyuma Pumulo, is on the album. Ndate Tsepotsula is on the album. It's Mama Tosini is on the album. Like, the roster is incredible. And to have been able to achieve that mm. was just, you know... Gulungile. A dream come true. Gulungile is coming. Gulungile is coming. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Tell us you know, about that. Um, so I've been working on my new album, Sankofa, for the first sessions were in New York in the end of May 2022. Oh. Those are the first sessions, and I did those with Michelle Dengecello and like a stellar lineup of musicians. I really just couldn't believe how exceptional the room was. Um, they, there's a young pianist called Orlando uh, Rodriguez who plays on the album. Um, the Taurus Mateen is on bass. Uh, Christopher Bruce is on guitar. Just an incredible lineup of musicians. Um, so, but the album has taken me two years to complete, you know, and it's. It's one of those things where the album was really about reclamation. And in the beginning, I thought it would be simple. Like, it yeah. would be a simple idea that I would go to West Africa, I would reclaim the Kora, the Ngoni, I would go to the U.S., I would reclaim the voices oh. of, like, um, our siblings who were, you know, kind of trafficked in that transatlantic mm. human trafficking um, 
so I, I, I wanted to make these connections. Um, but as life would have it, there were lots of other tragedies that happened along the way that reminded me, that made it more personal for mm. me. So Kulungile is the first song that comes out. Uh, it comes out next week, Friday on the 12th of April. This, yeah. yeah, on the 12th of April. Um, and uh, that song is really personal. It speaks to childhood trauma. And it speaks to, you know, that journey of, of, of as an adult, yeah. uh, the journey of trying to mend all of that trauma and arrive at the idea of it being okay, that kulungil, yeah. you know. And I think it's something we should talk about because there's so many adults walking around with yeah. childhood wounds. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, Kingta, anti Kingta. <laughs> Thank you so much for Do making not time. make that ubiquitous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making time for us, Thank and all you. the best with the launch of the new album. Thank so, you looking very much. forward to the Hold single. Hold on, we're going to see you at uh, Carnival City okay. on the 11th of May. On the 11th of May. For the launch May. performance, yeah. All right, no, I'll be there. Thank you so to much. listen to your new music and Thank just you. the new body of work. Well Thank done, you for the support and incredible the work that you've done. Auntie King Ta, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the conversation.